Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about auxiliary memory in computer organization course, computer architecture course, computer organization and architecture course. First point, another name for auxiliary memory is secondary memory. Hence, we can say that auxiliary memory can also be called as secondary memory. Next, second point, to store the large data files permanently, we have to use auxiliary memory. That means, we have to store large data files permanently. For that purpose, we have to use auxiliary memory. Third point, auxiliary memory is non-volatile. That means, once the power is switched off, whatever the data that is stored in the auxiliary memory cannot be erased. Hence, we can say that auxiliary memory can also be called as non-volatile memory. Next, auxiliary memory can store terabytes of data. So, terabytes of data means 10 power 12. Tera means 10 power 12. To store terabytes of data, we have to use a memory called as auxiliary memory. Next one, auxiliary memory is cheaper when compared to the primary memory. So, in terms of cost, the cost of auxiliary memory is less when compared to the primary memory such as RAM and ROM. Next one. Based on the access, auxiliary memory devices can be classified into two types. So, first one is sequential access device. Second one is random access device. In the case of sequential access device, we have to access the data sequentially. Suppose uh, we are taking five songs in a, uh, five songs are there. So suppose we want to access third song. First, we have to access the first song. Next, we have to access the second song. Then we have to access the third song. Okay, so that means we have to access the data sequentially in the case of sequential access device. Second type is random access device. We have to access the data, whatever the data we require, that data can be accessed randomly. Suppose there are five songs are there, we want to access third song, so directly we have to access that third song. In the previous case, first we have to access the first song, then we have to access the second song. After that, we have to access the third song. But in the case of random access device, whatever the data we require, that data can be accessed directly. But here, whatever the data uh, we require that data can be accessed sequentially. That is the difference between sequential access device and a random access device. The example for sequential access device is magnetic tape. So, magnetic tape is the example for sequential access device. The data can be accessed from the magnetic tape sequentially, not in randomly. Next one. The example for random access device is magnetic disk and optical disk. These are the two examples for random access device. Next. Now we can go for magnetic tape. In the next video, we can go for magnetic disk. In the magnetic tape, the first point is, it is a sequential access type. 
storage device. Okay, so in the case of magnetic tape, we are accessing the data sequentially, not in randomly. And also, we have to store the data into the magnetic tape in a sequential manner. Okay, suppose this is the example for magnetic tape. Suppose in this uh, tape, there are five songs are stored. Suppose we want to access fourth song. We do not access the fourth song directly. To access the fourth song, first we have to access the first song. Next we have to access the second song. Next we have to access the third song. After that, whatever the song we require, that is the fourth song, that can be accessed. Okay, that is the sequential access storage device. So, magnetic tape is a sequential access storage type device. Next one, it is very popular storage medium for large data files. So, for storing the large data files permanently, we have to use magnetic tape. This is the diagrammatic representation of magnetic tape. In that one, there are two reels are there. First one is supply reel and the second one is take up reel. Supply reel can provide the plastic ribbon and the take up reel can receive the plastic ribbon that are from the supply reel. Next one, uh, this is called as plastic ribbon. So this line is nothing but plastic ribbon. Only one side of the plastic ribbon can be coated with magnetic material. On that magnetic material, some magnetic spots are there. In that magnetic spots, we have to store the information in the form of bits. Only one side of the plastic ribbon can be coated with magnetic material. On that side, we have to place this read or write head. So, read or write head is used for reading the information from this plastic ribbon or writing the information into the plastic ribbon. The plastic ribbon can be moved from supply reel to the take-up reel by using drive rollers. Drive rollers are used for moving the plastic ribbon from supply reel to the take-up reel. At that time, the read right head can read the information from the plastic ribbon or are writing the information into the plastic ribbon. Next point. The data stored on the magnetic tape can be read again and again. Okay. So, you want to read the information that is stored on the magnetic tape can be read again and again how many number of times you require. Next point, whenever a new data is stored into the magnetic tape, whatever the previous data that is stored on the magnetic tape, that can be arranged. Whenever new data is stored into the magnetic tape, the previous data that is stored in the magnetic tape can be arranged. Next point, uh, the cost required to store the information into the magnetic tape is inexpensive. That means the cost required to store the information into the magnetic tape is less expensive. Next point, the width of the plastic ribbon. Okay, width of the plastic ribbon can be various from uh, 4 mm to 
one inch and the how much of information that can be stored into the magnetic tape can be various from 100 MB to 200 GB. Okay, that means 100 MB to 200 GB of data that can be stored into the magnetic tape. So the plastic ribbon width can be varies from 4 mm to 1 inch. Next one, uh, the main purpose of magnetic tape is used to provide backup storage. For backup storage, we have to use the magnetic tape. Next one, uh, the information that is stored in the magnetic tape in the form of bits, the collection of bits can be formed as one character. Okay, how many number of bits that are required to form one character? So, usually seven or nine bits are recorded simultaneously to form a character together with a parity bit. Okay, how many number of bits are required? Seven or nine bits are required to form one character together with a parity bit. Here the parity bit is used for uh, error detection purpose. Okay, next one. Uh, on the magnetic tape, we have to perform four operations. First one is magnetic tape can be stopped. That means we have to stop the uh, moving of magnetic tape. Second one is magnetic tape can be started to move either in forward direction or in reverse direction. That means magnetic tape can be moved either in forward direction or in reverse direction. Third one, magnetic tape can be rewound. That means the magnetic tape can be moved to the starting position. So these four types of operations that can be performed on the magnetic tape. Magnetic tape can be stopped, magnetic tape can be rewound, magnetic tape can be uh, started either in forward direction or in reverse direction. But magnetic tape cannot be stopped or are started in between the individual characters. Okay, we cannot stop, uh, we cannot stop the magnetic tape between the individual characters. It is not possible to stop or start the magnetic tape between the individual characters. Okay, hence the, ma uh, the information that is stored on the magnetic tape in terms of blocks. A block is nothing but a collection of records. But where we have to stop the magnetic tape? To stop the magnetic tape, we have to use some gaps. That gaps are inserted between the records. In that gap, we have to stop the magnetic tape. Okay, so here see this one. R1, R2, R3 are the records. Okay, in that records, we have to store the information. And uh, this is, uh, these, these are called as gaps. Okay, so two individual records are separated by using gaps. That gaps are called as inter-record gaps. Okay, R1 and R2 are separated by using some gap. R2 and R3 is separated by using some gap. In that gap, we have to stop the magnetic tape. What is the purpose of this inter-record gap? So, inter-record gap is used for stopping the magnetic tape. Okay. In that time, only we have to stop the moving of the magnetic tape. Okay. Next point. 
each record on the magnetic tape has an identification bit pattern at the beginning and the end of the record. Suppose this is R1 record, before R1 record, after R1 record, some identification bit pattern is available in the form of gap. Next, this is R2 record. This is an identification bit pattern before the record R2 and after the record R2. Next, this is R3 record, an identification bit pattern before R3 record and after the R3 record. So, each record on the magnetic tape has an identification bit pattern at the beginning of the record and the ending of the record. Suppose, by reading the bit pattern at the beginning of the record, the tape control identifies the record number. By reading the bit pattern at the end of the record, the tape control identifies the beginning of a gap. Okay. So, by reading the bit pattern at the beginning of a record, the tape control identifies the record number. Okay. This is R1 record. So, this is the first record. By, by reading the bit pattern before the record. By reading the bit pattern at the end of the record, the tape control identifies as a gap. Identifies it as a gap before the next record. Okay. So, by observing this, we can say that the magnetic tape can store the data in the form of records. Okay. These records are separated by using some gaps. That gaps are called as inter-record gap. To represent that gap, we have to use some identification bit pattern. Okay. Suppose by reading the bit pattern, before the beginning of a record, the tape control identi identifies the record number. Okay. Next, by reading the bit pattern at the end of a record, the tape control identifies it as a gap before the next record. Okay. Next one. A magnetic tape unit can be addressed by using the record number and the number of characters within the record. Okay. So, by using that two factors, a magnetic tape can be addressed. Okay. A magnetic tape can be addressed by using two points. First one is record number. Second one is number of characters within the record. These records are of a fixed length or a variable length. Okay. Some magnetic tapes can follow a fixed length records. Some magnetic tape can follow a variable length record. Okay. So, hence we can say that the records in the magnetic tape can be of a fixed length or a variable length. So, next one. What are the advantages of magnetic tape and what are the disadvantages of magnetic tape? First, we can go for the advantages. First one is inexpensive. The cost of the magnetic tape is inexpensive and the cost of storing the data in the magnetic tape is also inexpensive. Next, second point, long-term storage. We have to store the data permanently in the magnetic tape. So, it provides backup storage. Next, third point, reusable. So, uh, the magnetic tape can be reused. 
many times. Next one, portable. So the diamagnetic tape can be moved from one place to another place. Next one, it is compact and easy to store in racks. So magnetic tape is uh, compact and easily stored in a racks. Next, what are the disadvantages of magnetic tape? First one is sequential access. Magnetic tape is a sequential access uh, device. We have to access the data in the magnetic tape in a sequential manner, not in a random. Next, second point, it requires caring to store. That is nothing but magnetic tape can be put in a place that is free from dust, that is free from humidity. Next one. Rate of data transfer is low. We are transferring the data uh, within one unit of time. That is uh, the transfer of data within one second from the magnetic tape is low. Next one. Stored data cannot be easily updated or are modified. Once the data is stored in a magnetic tape, it cannot be easily modified. It cannot be easily updated. Okay. So these are the advantages of magnetic tape. These are the disadvantages of magnetic tape. The detailed description of magnetic disk is available in the previous video. Please refer that previous video for magnetic disk in the auxiliary memory. I hope all of you understanding this video. If you really understanding this video, please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will try to clarify your doubts. If you really like this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Divvela Srinivasara. After subscribing my YouTube channel, Click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. For better understanding of computer organization and architecture course, go to this channel and go to the playlist called Computer Architecture for a Computer Organization. It contains more than 80 videos. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. Hi friends. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about auxiliary memory in computer architecture course, computer organization course, computer organization and architecture course. Auxiliary memory can also be called as secondary memory. The most commonly used auxiliary memory devices that are used in the computer system are magnetic disk and magnetic tape. Hence, we can say that magnetic disk and magnetic tape can also be called as secondary memory storage devices. First, we have to discuss about magnetic disk. And the second one we have to discuss about magnetic tape. First point in the magnetic disk. A magnetic disk is a circular plate constructed with metal or plastic coated with magnetized material. Often both sides of the disk surface can be used to store the information. All the disks are stacked on one spindle. So here several disks are stacked on one spindle with read-write head available on each surface of the disk. All the disks are rotate together with high speed. Bits are stored on the magnetic surface in spots along the concentric circles. So this is one concentric circle, this is another concentric circle, this is another concentric circle. Okay, 
on the concentric circles some magnetic spots are available in that magnetic spots we have to store the uh, binary information in the form of bits these concentric circles can be called as tracks okay so this is one concentric circle this is another concentric circle this is another concentric circle each and every concentric circle can be called as tracks on that tracks some magnetized material is there on that magnetized material some spots are there in that spots we have to store the binary information next the tracks can be divided into some sections that sections can be called as sectors okay so this is one sector this is another sector this is another sector this is another sector this is another sector in the sectors we have to store the information in the records okay the minimum quantity of information that can be transferred is sector how a disk surface can be divided into tracks and the sectors that can be shown in this diagram every concentric circle can be called as one track the tracks are commonly divided into some subsections so each and every subsection can be called as sector every sector contains some records in that records we have to store the information a read write head is available on each surface of the disk that means a read write head is available on each track next one a disk system can be addressed by using address bits that specifies the disk surface number disk number sector number a track within a given sector by using these four factors a disk system can be addressed okay once again i am telling a disk system can be addressed by using disk surface number next one disk number third one is sector number fourth one is track number okay once the read write head positioned to a particular track the system has to wait until the rotating disk reaches to a particular sector suppose we want to access a uh, particular we want to access the data from this particular sector first we have to identify the track number next we have to identify the sector number once the read write head positioned to a particular track number the system has to wait until the rotating disk reaches to a uh, particular sector once the read write head position to a particular track and uh, reaches to a particular sector then the information transfer can be done very fastly once it reaches the beginning of a sector okay a disk system supports multiple read write heads so that a simultaneous transfer of bits can be done from several tracks at the same time next point suppose this is one disk this this disk contains several number of tracks this is another disk it contains several number of tracks 
This is another disc. It contains several number of tracks. Suppose this disc contains track number 5. This is track number 5. In this disc also, this is track number 5. In this disc also, this is track number 5. Okay. So, track number 5 of this disc, track number 5 of this disc, track number 5 of this disc forms as one cylinder. Cylinder is nothing but the same track number of a several discs can be formed as one cylinder. Next one, each and every disc can be called as plotter. Okay. Same track number of several discs can be formed as one cylinder. Each disc can be called as one platter. Each and every concentric circle can be called as track. The track can be divided into several subsections can be called as sector. All the discs are stacked one by one to this spindle. Okay, this entire a spindle can be connected to the arm assembly. So, on, on each surface of the disc, read-write head is attached. Okay, so this is the read-write head. All the discs that are attached to the spindle that can be rotated with high speed. Okay, this is the block diagram of magnetic disc and this is called as arm assembly. Next one. A track within a given sector near the circumference have the larger size than the tracks near the center of the disc. So observe this one. This track is near the center of the disc that has smaller in size. This track near the circumference, so it has the larger size. Okay, the tracks near the circumference have the larger size. The tracks near the center of the disc have smaller size. To make all the all the records of a given sector of equal length, some disks have variable recording density with higher density on the tracks that are near the center of the disk than the tracks on the near the circumference. That means which tracks have the higher recording density the tracks near the center of the disc because they are smaller in size because of that reason higher recording density is available that can store more information whereas tracks near the circumference have larger density uh, larger in size so that smaller recording density is uh, available. Okay, so the tracks near the center of the disc have smaller in size and have higher recording density so that it can store more information. Whereas the tracks near the center of the, uh, near the circumference have larger in size that have smaller recording density. Because of the reason, to make all the uh, to make all the tracks with equal length, okay, to make all the tracks with equal length for storing the information. So the tracks near the center of the disc have higher recording density than the tracks near the circumference. So, this 
equalizes the number of bits on all the tracks of a given sector. Next one, a disk system, a disk have a permanently, uh, a disk with permanently storage capability that can be attached to the ARM assembly and it can be removed by the user occasionally. That disk system can be called as hard disk. Okay, a disk system that is permanently attached to the ARM assembly unit and cannot be removed by the user occasionally. That disk system can be called as hard disk. A disk drive with removable disk can be called as floppy disk. That means a disk drive that has only temporary storage purpose and it can be uh, removed at any time. That disk system can be called as floppy disk. Hard disk can be used for storing large amount of information whereas floppy disk can be used for storing small amount of information. Hard disk is permanently attached to the ARM assembly unit whereas floppy disk is temporarily attached to the uh, system. Okay, next one. We can take any storage device that contains two important properties. So first one is access time. Second one is transfer rate. Access time contains two types of times. First one is seek time plus transfer time. Okay. First one is what is access time? Access time is nothing but the time required, the average time required to reach a particular location in the memory. After reaching a particular location in the memory, we have to obtain, that means we have to access that content. Okay, access time is nothing but the time required to reach a particular location in the memory and obtain its content is nothing but access time. Access time is equal to seek time plus transfer time. What is seek time? Seek time is nothing but the time required to position the read write head to a particular location in the memory. So the time required to position the read write head to a particular location in the memory. Transfer time is nothing but the time required to transfer the data to or from the device. Okay, the time required to position the read write head to a particular location, the time required to transfer the data to or from the device. So the collection of seek time and the, trans the combination of seek time and the transfer time is nothing but access time. Second one is transfer rate. Transfer rate is nothing but the number of characters or words that can be transferred from a device within one second. Within one second, how many number of characters or words that can be transferred from a device once the read write head position to a particular track and a particular setter. That is nothing but transfer rate. These two can be called as important characteristics of any device. Okay, next we can go for magnetic tape.